What's up folks, I hope you're okay. Welcome to this week's video. And this week we've got a deload week on my powerlifting program. So I'm gonna be taking you through basically some clips of my whole week's workouts. So we've got squats and bench today. We've got bench and deadlift day two. We've got uh, bench and squats day three. And then we've got straight leg deadlifts, vertical pull downs, or vertical pull, horizontal pull, overhead press, and I'm gonna throw some tricep dips in there as well. And uh, I'm just gonna do a voiceover for the video. So uh, yeah, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you've got any questions, post them down below. But we're gonna get after it. I'm just currently putting on my lifting shoes. I'm here at my gym. We are about to get into it. I'm gonna put some music on, and we're gonna have a good time. So let's get to it. So here you can see a visual example of the program I'm running at the minute and you can also see the percentages that I'm normally working on those days and also how much I've decreased down. So we're looking at around 10 to 15% drop in terms of volume that I'm actually working on. So the loads will be a lot lighter. And um, For this first day we've got squats and bench press and I'm working on around 70-75% one rep max down uh, to 60, 65%, so it's a lot lighter. With the squats, I was also adding in a band and just kind of um, just forcing a little more tension towards the glutes. But I really want to talk about what deloads are and deload weeks are. So, a deload week is essentially just a reduction in volume and intensity, and they're typically pre planned and built into training programs, although sometimes like a, a con of the, the deload week if it's pre-planned it can be that it's a wasted week if you're feeling really good so typically we would, we'd take a deload week if we find that we're struggling we're not progressing as well as we should be we might be picking up little injuries we may be very fatigued but at the same time a pro of a deload week that's pre-planned can be that it's great to almost err on the side of caution so we can actually just take that week a, take on kind of a rest period for one to two weeks um, it's it's great for kind of effective long-term progress because we're able to kind of just allow for that one week just to recover and then go back in the next week lift heavy again so the injury pre prevention from a deload week is massive and so many times people will ignore that that we've got to try and keep in that there is possible effects of super compensation with progress on lifts. So actually taking a bit of a deload every four weeks is not necessarily a bad thing. And I think it's probably something that I'm going to be employing a lot more. Uh, who should be taking a deload? Now, for more advanced lifters, they're probably gonna need them a lot more often, um, just because they're lifting heavier loads and under a lot more stress because of that weight that they're moving. People who are less trained, uh, so less trained individuals probably don't necessarily need a deload week as often just because they're not lifting heavy enough to cause potential uh, tissue damage or injury that's or kind of stress factors that are going to play on the body so they can kind of not necessarily worry too much about having them planned in and could probably go maybe every eight weeks as opposed to some people who are more advanced that need to go maybe every four weeks so kind of understanding when you would apply a deload you're probably going to be looking at after an overreaching phase and once you've overreached past a certain point you'd probably look at then kind of taking a break um, you don't need to use them too frequently so like every kind of three to four weeks really um, or certainly less than three weeks They're, they can typically be done every two to three months um, can be a good recommendation for people um, and like I said, a kind of what a deload actually is. Um, it's a drop off of volume or intensity by decreasing the sets and also the percentage of your one rep max. So like you saw in the, the diagram earlier, I was taking percentages of my one rep max and then dropping it down and then um, kind of working off those weights. Big issue I found with this deload week was because of how light I was working in terms of weight, 
I really struggle to get into the mindset of being able to move the weight properly. Like for me, squatting sets of eight at 125, 130 kilos is challenging, so I switch on. Whereas when I was squatting at 100 kilos for sets of eight, it just didn't feel natural and it didn't feel normal. So I didn't really feel like I was switching on. And then when I was doing sets of uh, four for, or three for kind of 127 kilos, it just didn't, again, didn't feel right. And I didn't feel like I was in kind of my normal routine and I didn't have the right mindset for it. So I almost felt like I was kind of, um, I don't want to say the term wasting time because I don't think it was, but I almost felt like I just couldn't get in the zone, which was really, really strange for me. Because when I power lift, I'd, I feel like I go through my routine, I feel solid, I feel good, and I can kind of push on, and it just didn't feel like that. Uh, so the, a few considerations to take into account for deloads is certainly calorie intake. Now, those who are kind of eating in a calorie surplus can get away with longer stretches of consistent training before requiring a deload. So those that are in a calorie deficit and training to lose body fat will probably need to have a look at a deload a little more often because their body is going to be in a position that they don't have the abundance of food, they're, they're going to be stressing their body and their, their muscles are going to obviously be depleting. Now the other thing you've got to look at which I mentioned already is experience levels. So beginners don't lift heavy weights in comparison to more advanced athletes so they can probably go with a little bit less in terms of deloads over a training period or cycle. Um, and then once you become more experienced and you're moving to greater loads, more frequent breaks will probably be needed then. Uh, the next thing you want to look at is probably your age. So those in the 40 plus age category um, will usually be best off incorporating deloads more often since recovery ability declines as people get older. So tissue connectivity, um, muscle mass, bone density, that kind of stuff, even though it's obviously helping from weight training, there, there still is the, the potential that they need to have uh, training breaks a lot more often. And it may also depend on kind of um, training um, frequency as well. Okay, uh, so younger athletes can usually get away with training for a higher number of consistent weeks without overtraining themselves or overreaching. So that's always a big consideration to have in terms of how long that they're actually able to push for. So the next factor we'd probably want to look at would be a lifestyle factor. Now, if you live in a generally stressful day-to-day -day life, be it physical or mental, um, with work, with family, with other commitments, uh, you may find that more frequent deloads will probably benefit you um, and vice versa. So if you are someone that doesn't have a very stressful lifestyle or um, kind of career, you may find that deloads aren't necessarily needed that frequent for yourself just because you're able to recover from the training that you're um, employing. So finally uh, would be sexual um, genetics. Now females tend to experience overtraining less frequently because their central nervous system is more resistant. So guys unfortunately we get a lot more taxed a lot quicker. Um, men can dig deeper into the CNS, um, their central nervous system and push a little bit heavier and push a little bit harder but that ability comes at consequences so we, we end up being a, a lot more fatigued and we may also find that our recovery times are a lot longer. So taking those points there into consideration from the calorie intake, the experience level, the age, the training, lifestyle, the, the sex that we are, um, have play on massive factors in terms of when we should be looking at implementing deloads and also kind of the, the effects of how it's going to play on our body in terms of when we actually take a deload. So I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the, the talk over the video. If you've got any questions about the clips in terms of um, form, in terms of progressions and stuff, give me a shout and I'm happy to answer them. It's just something that I wanted to throw together that could help you along the way in terms of being able to program a little bit better and help you make more progress. So there you have it folks, that was this week's deload program and kind of a look at what deload should contain and how best you may want to implement it from my point of view. Um, again, this is kind of just my opinion, it is just all about the kind of recovery week where you're still training through those rep ranges, through the, 
the styles of training from the power to the strength to the, the hypertrophy side of things as well with the inclusion of all your accessory work. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos from me, go ahead and subscribe up here. If you want to watch the last video about squatting, go ahead and click the link here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. Please do leave me any comments, questions or concerns you may have. and I'm happy to answer them. If you want to check out my website, you can go to the first link in the description box. And I'll see you all in next week's video. Peace out.